Hey guys, what's good? Welcome back to none other than, of course, your girl cooking with Tammy. And today I'm gonna show you how I make my delicious cheesy beef up lasagna. When I tell you this lasagna right here is gonna be everything. It's gonna be mouth-watering delicious just to let you know in advance. So without further ado, let's introduce these ingredients and get started. First up on the chopping board is our ground meat. Of course, if you wanna substitute the ground beef for pork or chicken, feel free to do so. We also have some diced onions as well as finely chopped garlic. Not to mention we have some sugar as well as butter, all-purpose flour, ground black pepper, salt, dried parsley as well as dried basil, dried Italian seasoning, beef bouillon. Of course, if you're gonna be using pork or chicken, you can substitute with chicken bouillon as well. And we also have milk, avocado oil, adobo, pasta sauce. And I know you guys peeped my oven ready lasagna noodles. Yes, we're gonna be using oven ready. I explained that to you as we start to cook. So with all of that being said, let's get to cooking. All right, first things first to a nice warm hot skillet. And I'm starting off with medium high heat. We're gonna add a small drizzle of oil to the pan. Start off with adding our diced onions. We're gonna to toss it around just a bit, get them nice and golden brown and well toasted. We want our onions to sweat. We wanna release all of the flavors out of the onions because we wanna create a good base for our meat. You're not gonna have good meat if you don't start off with a good base, all right? So let's get those onions nice and translucent. Once that occurs, we're gonna add our minced garlic. Yes, our finely chopped garlic. Get it in that pan, stir it up, toss it around, toss it around. And with the garlic, if you're using high heat or medium high heat, you wanna be mindful. Try not to walk away from tossing that garlic back and forth because if not, you're gonna get burned garlic. And garlic tends to burn really easily. Now, there are some dishes where burnt garlic is what is flavorful, it's off the hook. However, this is not one of those dishes where you need burnt garlic. Once our garlic is nice and toasted, it's about that time, yes it is. We're gonna add our ground meat, whichever our preference is. For this particular recipe, we're gonna add our ground beef and chop it up, chop it up. Make sure our onions and our garlic is well combined with our ground meat. Come on, let's get it. Put your back into it. <laughs> I usually like to add my seasonings while the meat is still raw. However, because this is ground beef, once the meat is rendered, it's gonna have a lot of excess oil. And once it's time to drain it off, you're gonna lose most of your seasonings within that oil. So I'm gonna hold off and season the meat. Our goal right now is basically to brown the meat. Same thing applies to pork. If you're using chicken or turkey, you can add the seasonings at this point in time, to be honest with you. And you're not gonna lose anything. Get that incorporating action taking place. As you can see, our meat is halfway brown. We are almost where we need to be. Yes, we are. After about five to six minutes, our meat is nice and brown. And as you can see, we have that excess oil right here in the pan. We're gonna discard it. And I'm gonna show you what else to do in two seconds. Alrighty, get that pan back on the stove top and we are gonna add our seasonings. We're gonna start off by adding our salt. Of course, it's salt to taste, so don't overdo it because we can always go back in there and add additional salt if necessary. Also, we're gonna add some ground black pepper, freshly cracked ground black pepper. Get it in here, get it in here. We're also gonna add some adobo. Give it a little extra flair. Yes, nothing wrong with that. We're gonna add our beef bouillon. However, if you're using ground chicken, ground beef, or turkey, be sure to use chicken bouillon instead. We're also gonna add some paprika. Give it a nice color. Stir it up and combine it really good. Make sure all of those seasonings is on every part of this meat. You understand? <laughs> Make sure everything is well seasoned. I don't care if it take you literally two minutes to combine the seasonings with the meat. We are gonna do what we gotta do, all right? Get it all combined, mix it up really good. And if necessary, if you feel the meat needs to be broken down a little bit more, now is the perfect time to do this as well. Also, give the meat a taste. See where we are. See if this is where you need it to be. Because guess what? The meat is all the way cooked at this point. So don't be afraid to taste it. Taste it and see whether or not if you need to add some additional seasonings. 
All right, we are going to go in with our favorite brand of pasta sauce. Yes, we're going to add the saucy sauce to the mix and we're going to stir it all in there. Stir it up. Make sure everything is well combined. Make sure your meat is nice and saucy. We don't want no dried meat, all right? We want it to be nice and saucy. And in order to counteract that acidity in the tomato sauce, right, to prevent us from getting that little heartburn and stuff at night, I like to add a little sugar. And what it does is it neutralizes the acidity because I like to eat a lot. And I know most of you probably do as well. And who wants to limit the amount of lasagna they can have? Feel what I'm saying? So add a little bit of sugar and that helps out a great deal. Now, here's the thing. I'm not telling you to add five pounds of sugar, neither a pound of sugar, because if you do, then, hey, it's gonna be absolutely too sweet. But with the little bit that I'm adding, the meat sauce is not gonna be sweet whatsoever. I'm gonna taste it once more, and I am gonna go back in and add some additional basil and Italian seasoning. So far, we are good to go. All right. So now that our meat sauce is done, we need to grab a separate pan. I call this my get busy pan. If you don't have a get busy pan in your kitchen, you just ain't cooking, all right? So this pan right here, ignore the fact that it looks beat up. It makes the best sauces, all right? Anyway, <laughs> what we're going to add to this pan right here is our butter. Yes, and this butter is salted butter. It doesn't matter if it's salted, unsalted, trust me. Just add the butter to the pan. Once everything is nice and melted, we are going to add our flour. We're not making a roux for mac and cheese, but we're making what's called a bechamel sauce. It's an amped up white sauce that complements lasagna. We're gonna consistently stir our butter and our flour because we don't want the flour to burn. Not to mention, we also wanna cook the flour because we don't want that floury consistency or taste. As you can see, everything is getting nice and frothy. We are gonna add our milk. We're gonna add a small amount at a time while consistently stirring. We are going to stir until our sauce starts to thicken up. We want that smooth consistency. And as you can see, our sauce is looking beautiful. We're going to add the remaining milk. And once the sauce comes back up to temperature, we are going to hit this sauce off with salt. Yes, we are. After we add the salt, we are going to add freshly cracked ground black pepper. Well, actually, I'm using rainbow peppercorn, but it don't matter. You can use freshly ground cracked pepper, regular ground black pepper. Just use some pepper, all right? <laughs> once we're done, what's going to really elevate the flavors in our bechamel sauce is nutmeg. Yes, we are going to add some nutmeg. Just a small pinch goes a long way. We're gonna combine it really well, make sure everything is well combined. And once we get this nice, silky, smooth consistency that I'm demonstrating right here, it is time for us to turn our stove top off. As I mentioned earlier, we have our oven ready lasagna. It's these lasagna shells that's already pre-cooked. All you have to do is basically open the pack, take it out the pack, and line it in your baking sheet. Put your meat on top and you are good to go. You don't have to go through the long process of having to boil your pasta, basically. Talk about time saver. So what we're gonna do to our casserole or Pyrex dish is we are gonna layer some meat into our dish. Why are we layering the meat first? Well, I got you. Reason being is because we don't want our noodles to stick to the dish or pan that we're gonna be using. So we need to add enough meat to the bottom. Once we're done, we're gonna lure it with our ready-to-go lasagna noodles. Yes, we are. We're gonna hit it off with some more meat on the top. This meat not only smells great, but it tastes absolutely delicious. After we get the meat onto our pasta, we're gonna add some of that delicious bechamel sauce. Oh man, I tell you, a little bit goes a long way. We're gonna add our bechamel sauce as much as possible and once we're done, we are gonna add some mozzarella cheese. Add your favorite blend of cheeses. For me, it's gonna be mozzarella. I'm gonna add a ton of mozzarella followed by our noodles once again. And we're gonna layer that meat on top. We're working with about a pound of meat, so we are gonna layer that meat on as if we have no discipline, you hear me? <laughs> no time to get scared. Let's layer on that meat and make it happen. We're gonna add that bechamel sauce to our lasagna. My cheesy meaty lasagna is one of my favorite go-to recipes, guys. Not only is it big on flavor, 
but it's so quick and easy to put together as you guys can see. It's great for any weekend or weeknight dinners, especially those nights where you're too tired to cook, but you don't want to order out because you're tired of everything that you've eaten in the neighborhood. This is the way to go right here. So quick and easy and absolutely delicious. Talk about good home cooking. Once we're finished adding our meat and our saucy sauce, we're going to lay some more noodles on top. Make sure you arrange it properly. And we're going to repeat the same process. We're going to add that meat. Yes, we are. Once we're done, we're going to add some more saucy sauce. And we are gonna add our cheeses. Not only am I gonna add at this point in time my mozzarella cheese, but we're also gonna add our, our Italian blend of cheeses, which consists of not only mozzarella, but Parmesan cheese, as well as Asiago, so on and so forth. We are gonna add that to our lasagna as well. We want our lasagna to be nice and cheesy. After we've added all of our cheeses and everything is ready to go, I'm gonna hit it off with a little bit of dry parsley. However, if you're gonna be using fresh parsley, wait until it's finished baking. After it's finished baking, then you're gonna add your fresh parsley because if you add the parsley right now, meaning the fresh parsley right now, it's gonna dry out in the oven and it's not gonna have that vibrancy. However, if you're using dry parsley, add it now as well and we are done. We're gonna cover it on over using what? The balloon method or our tent method meaning we're not going to smush or smash the aluminum foil down onto the cheese if that's if you do that it's going to defeat the purpose and the cheese is going to get stuck to the aluminum foil so basically you're going to try to create like an ear pocket in the middle preventing it from sticking to the cheese once we're done we're going to place it into our 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes on fahrenheit of course and after 25 minutes, you're gonna take the foil off and allow it to sit in the oven for about five to 10 minutes or until the cheese is nice and brown to your liking. And when you're done, you're gonna take it out of the oven, allow it to sit for about 15 minutes before you cut into it. And this is what you're gonna have. This is gonna be your finalized product, all right? You can't tell me this right here is not everything. What, when I tell you everything, absolutely delicious big on presentation and quick and easy to put together anyway guys i'm your girl cooking with tammy and i will catch you guys in another video and yes of course i tasted it and it tastes absolutely delicious best lasagna ever anyway enjoy talk to you later bye guys